this is the postgraduate pediatric orthopedic video series. In video 8.1 from the postgraduate pediatric orthopedic video series, uh, we watch how to treat typical uh, clubfoot. In this video, we'll watch how to treat atypical and complex clubfoot. Uh, this is presented by the late Professor Ponsetti himself, and it is a courtesy of Ponsetti International. Uh, the atypical or complex club foot is uh, a club foot that has severe quinous deformity of the heel and all metatarsals are in a plantar flexion. A 10 day old baby with club feet. The feet were in severe abduction, varus and equinus. There was a deep crease above the heel and one across the sole of the foot. All metatarsals were in plantar flexion. The adduction of the metatarsals and the heel varus were partially corrected by abducting the foot with counter pressure applied on the lateral side of the calcaneus rather than on the head of the talus. A grave error. When the third cast was removed, a small fold of the skin over the base of the toes indicates that the foot slipped up inside the cast. In the fourth cast, the foot slipped up further folding and damaging the skin, and cause the cables to increase. The foot is now in line with the leg and will easily slip up. Manipulations to improve the cables failed. A tendochilus stenotomy at two months of age did not prevent the foot from slipping up inside the cast. The skin damaged and the cables increased. The foot was stunted. After the second percutaneous Tendochilus tenotomy at four months of age, the foot could be dorsiflexed, but the hind foot was in severe valgus and the forefoot hyperabducted. A grotesque deformity ensued. The x rays showed the metatarsals in severe plantar flexion, the hind foot in equinus, and the toes extended. The metatarsals are in severe abduction at the least frank line. The telocalcaneal angle is very wide. On her first visit to our clinic at five months of age, the feet were stubby, swollen, hyperabducted, and the big toes were short. There were some cables and equinus and a skin crease on the lateral border of the foot and across the sole. One week later, when our first cast was removed, the swelling had decreased. The feet appear to have increased in length because the cables and the forefoot hyperabduction had improved. The feet could be dorsiflex 5 degrees. The hind foot was a sprain in valgus. The medial ankle ligaments and the tendons of the posterior tibial and toe flexors were overstretched. With the heel varus corrected, a second plaster cast was applied using a posterior plaster splint over the calf, heel, and sole, reinforced by a well molded plaster bandage. The cables and the equinos were corrected simultaneously by pushing with my thumbs under the metatarsals while an assistant stabilized the knee in flexion. With my fingers, I molded the plaster cast over the ankle. To prevent the cast from slipping, the knee was immobilized in 110 degrees of flexion by applying a plaster splint in front of the knee, reinforced with a plaster bandage around the thigh, thus avoiding excessive plaster behind the severely bent knee. A similar plaster cast was applied to the right foot. When dorsiflexing the foot, the orthopedist must see the toes. They often blanch from ischemia, but the blood returns when the pressure is decreased and the plaster sets. The cast held the feet straight in 5 degrees of dorsiflexion. After two more casts changed weekly, she wore a pre-molded foot abduction orthosis 
with the shoes in 30 degrees of hour rotation 20 hours a day. At 8 months of age, the feet still stubby appeared straight. Although the metatarsals remain slightly hyperabducted, probably due to the contracted quadratus plantae, the heel were in 5 degrees of valgus. The range of motion in all joints was within normal limits. The orthosis never caused any discomfort to the child. She liked to stand up and bounced in her swing. At 13 months of age, Sierra stands up on feet plantigrade. The range of motion of the tarsal joints is normal and has 15 degrees of foot dorsiflexion. She cruises and takes a few steps with assistance. She walked at 14 months. A seven-day-old baby with bilateral club feet. The feet were in various adduction and severe quinos. There was a deep crease across the sole of the foot, one above the heel and one over the calf. These creases are seen in the complex club foot. Possibly they are caused by the severe contraction of the gastrosoleus and plantar intrinsic muscles of the foot. The foot supinators are easily stretched. After gentle manipulation, plaster casts were applied with the feet in 70 degrees of equinos and the forefeet in 50 degrees of supination. A week later, the foot adduction was improved. The equinos, heel varus, and the cables persisted. The feet were manipulated again. The index finger is placed over the posterior aspect of the lateral malleolus, while the thumb comes to rest over the lateral side of the head of the talus, in front of the ankle, not over the very prominent anterior tuberosity of the calcaneus. Generally, the foot is abducted. The index finger and thumb are kept in the same position while the cotton and plaster bandages are applied. The plaster cast is well molded. A plaster splint is placed over the knee in 120 degrees of flexion to prevent the slippage of the cast. A similar plaster cast is applied to the right foot. A plaster splint is placed over the calf and sole to avoid excessive plaster in front of the ankle. 
I place my thumbs under the metatarsals to dorsiflex the foot and correct the cables. With my fingers, I molded the cast around the ankle. In the second cast, the feet are in 20 degrees of abduction and 30 degrees of equinus. The heel values was corrected. The cast were removed one week later. All the components of the deformity had been corrected except for 20 degrees of cavus and equinus. The tendo Achilles was tied. Under local anesthesia, the tendon was sectioned on both feet. The feet could now be dorsiflexed 20 degrees. New plaster casts were applied with the feet in 15 degrees of dorsiflexion, the cables corrected and the knees in 90 degrees of flexion. Three weeks later, the plantar creases were shallow. Motion in the subtalar and ankle joints was normal. A foot abduction of orthosis was applied. The middle straps are tightened first. Then the upper and lower straps are loosely tightened. The child is taught how to kick the legs together. The shoes are in 30 degrees of our rotation. The orthosis is re readily accepted by the child and parents. One month later, after the tenotomy, the feet look and move normally. The telocalcaneal motion is normal. The feet can be dorsiflexed 15 degrees. There are no creases above the heel and the plantar creases are, have nearly disappeared. The orthosis will be worn 16 hours a day.